What we'd like to go over today is how to adjust and set the machine so that we know the relative position of the spindle to the part in the vise. For this, we've actually removed any parts from here, but we do have parallels in. And as we remember from before, we can trust that this bottom surface is parallel to the table and that this back surface of the vise is parallel to the x-axis. And we can use these as stops when we would insert our part in the y-axis, in the y-axis, and in the z-axis. We'd also like to add a stop in the x-axis. And for this, we could introduce a vise stop. What we see here is two parallel jaws that can be closed together using this screw and they're sprung apart. If I place this over the back jaw of the vise and tighten down on that screw, like so, with an Allen key, I can add a positive stop in the X axis. So now I have X, Y, and Z. To be able to indicate the location of this corner relative to the spindle, we're going to introduce something called a one, two, three block. This is one inch by two inch by three inches. And this block is known to be square and parallel. And you can use this, place it in the vise, and then use something called an edge finder to indicate the sides of this block. And that will then allow us to tell where the spindle is. So to do this, I'm going to insert it into the vise and push it up against my positive stop. I'm going to go ahead and clamp down, holding down on the one, two, three block to make sure it stays against the parallels. And now I have this corner touching the vice stop, touching the back jaw, and the bottom of it is touching the parallel. All right, to be able to locate the sides of this one, two, three block, I'm going to introduce a tool called an edge finder. This tool has a, a round shank, and then the end of the tool can actually displace. There's a little spring that's pulling this up into the center of the tool. And as I actually spin this quickly and move it into the side of the tool, you will see that I can visually indicate when we're actually touching the side of the part. Works really, really well. To keep these from self-destructing, we like to run them at about 1,000 RPM or a little bit under. All right, so to load this into the machine, I could either use a collet. This is a half inch shank. I could either put it in a collet or I can go ahead and use a drill chuck like we have here. This drill chuck is used for holding tools of different diameters that uh, don't fit in standard collets and is only meant for axial loads. So drilling operations using center drills, reaming, things that we're going to show in the next couple modules. We're never going to put an end mill in this because the side loads that would be applied to the drill truck will actually damage the internals. All right, now to load this into the machine, I noticed that this has an integral taper and drawbar attachment on the back. So I can put it straight into the spindle, get the keyway aligned, and tighten down on the drawbar. All right, so now that I have my drill chuck inserted in the machine, I can go ahead and take my edge finder, place it into the drill chuck, and I want to tighten down on my tool. To do this, I'm going to notice that this is actually a keyless chuck. Many chucks have a key that you're going to tighten. Here, what we're going to do is apply a counter rotation between this upper knurled section and the lower knurled section. So I'm going to hold the top section, take the lower section, and rotate it counterclockwise to tighten down onto the tool. So now this is tight in here, and I'm going to want to go ahead and turn on my edge finder. All right, now that we've got the tool loaded in here, we want to think about which surfaces we're going to edge find. I have four options here. I really want to focus on finding this back surface, which is touching the back of the vise, and this right surface, which is touching the vise stop, so that when I pull out the one, two, three block and place my material in, I will once again know that those two surfaces are already found. To do this, I'm going to get myself a little bit more into the proper location, and then we'll turn on the spindle. As we're headed over there, we want to note the speed that we're going to be running the spindle at. I want to run this edge finder around 1,000 RPM. So if I come up and I look, I see actually I'm already at 1,000 RPM, which is really convenient. If I was well above that, say I was at like 2,000 RPM, I'd actually want to pull the tool out, or have done this before I inserted the tool, turn the spindle on, adjust the speed down into an appropriate range for this tool. If I were to turn it on at two or 3,000 RPM, it could easily self-destruct. 
or so now that I see that I am at about a thousand RPM, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the spindle. We can come in and take a look at the tool. We can see that the upper shank that's held into the drill chuck is spinning very concentric. The bottom portion is wiggling ever so slightly. I can actually come in and touch this and get it to wiggle a little bit more, which is going to make it easier for me to see what's happening as I bring this into contact with the part. So now what I'm going to do is lower this using the, the quill until it's down far enough that the lower shank, the smaller diameter, will come into contact with the part as I move in closer. So now what I would do is look at this perpendicular to the tool. So I'll let you come around and have the view that I would want to have, nice and low. And as I bring the table closer and closer to the spindle, we'll see we're about to start making contact. As we're truing up onto that cylinder, I have both my hands on the hand wheel and I'm ever so slowly moving and I'm watching for that bottom portion to kick off to the side, just like that. Now I know that I have just made contact with the side of the one, two, three block. At this point, I'm actually going to raise the quill to move this back off of the part. I'm gonna stop the spindle so it's easier to talk. Now, edge of this one, two, three block is one radius of the tip of the edge finder away from the center line of the spindle. This radius on this tool is actually 0.1 inches, so I now know that I'm exactly 0.1 inches off this edge. How can I use this to my advantage? Well, each of these machines has a digital readout. Coming up here, I see this digital display. It's giving me a readout in X and in Y. I've been working on the Y direction. Now there's a lot of different ways I could do this. I could enter a value of 0.1 into this box to say that's my location. What I rather do is zero it out and then move the machine to compensate for the radius, as you'll see here. I'm just gonna hit the Y0 button, which zeroed out that reading. I am now gonna move the table an extra 0.1 inches such that I will have the spindle perfectly aligned with the edge of the one, two, three block. To do this, I'm gonna watch the digital readout as I turn the dial until I get to 0.1 inches. Now I will look visually and make sure I didn't go the wrong way. I wanna make sure now that I see that the spindle is aligned with the edge of the part. It is, so I'm just gonna hit that same button up on the digital readout to zero out the Y axis. I'm gonna repeat this process in X. and re-zero. Just as a last check, I'm moving now, just watching the DRO until I get to zero, zero, and I want to make sure that this point is right over the corner of my one, two, three block, and I can do a visual check to make sure that's the case, and this is where the readout shows zero, zero. So now I have located in X and Y the relative position of the spindle and the vise. And this is then useful. I can pull the one, two, three block out, place my part in, and I will now be able to create features in the part relative to this corner.